Hi everyone, in this video I will go over a problem with you in Excel that will show you how the present value of perpetuity formula can be used in real life to determine how to fund scholarships or endowments. Similar problems have also appeared on the quantitative methods section of CFA level 1 exam as well. So consider Sally. Sally is a rich business owner and uh, looking to set up a scholarship fund for deserving students at her local university. She wants to be able to award $25,000 annually in perpetuity, so that means forever. The first scholarship will be awarded and paid out exactly four years from today. The funds will be deposited into an account immediately and will grow at a rate of 4% compounded semi-annually how much money must Sally donate to fund the scholarship today for questions like these I always recommend that you make a timeline and so on this timeline each interval represents one year zero stands for today the first $25,000 is to be paid out four years from today so today so one two three four this is where the first $25,000 is going to go and then I'm going to copy this and paste this through and through, meaning that after that, you want to be paying out $25,000 to a deserving student every year forever. So this goes on forever. The timeline is not stopping at time period seven. This is going on forever, which means that this is a perpetuity. A useful way of thinking about this problem is to ask ourselves, how much money does Sally need at the end of time period three so that she can give out $25,000 forever? Once we know what that amount is, then we can go back and ask ourselves how much money do we need to put or invest today so that at the end of year three, we have that amount. So we're essentially breaking up the problem in two steps. First, figuring out how much we need here and then using that to figure out how much we need here. In order to do the first step, it often helps to make a hypothetical timeline where today is represented right here. Why? Well, because some of you may already know that the present value of a perpetuity formula is given as C over R, where C represents the cash flow and R represents the discount rate, or in this case, the interest rate. Now, the C is given, which is $25,000. We actually need to figure out the appropriate rate. I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. But the main point here is that you can only use this formula if the first cash flow is occurring one year from now. On this timeline, the first cash flow of $25,000 would be one year from now. And so when you implement this present value of perpetuity formula, that will give you the present value at this point. Now you might say, okay, then all I gotta do is basically do equal to 25,000, which is the cash flow divided by 4%, which is 0 0.04, and get the answer, which is $625,000. Unfortunately, that is not true. Why? Well, because the interest rate of 4% is being compounded semi-annually, which means that if you are here at time period zero and the first $25,000 is one year from now, your true opportunity cost or your true discount rate is not 4%. You have to figure out the appropriate annual rate. This is also known as the effective annual rate or EAR. And in Excel, there is a simple way of calculating it. You write effect, which is short for effective annual interest rate. When you open the parentheses, it asks you what is the nominal rate. In this case, it's 0.04 or 4%. NPERY stands for number of periods per year. Because the interest is being compounded semi-annually or twice a year, you'll put two here and boom, this is your effective annual rate. If it helps, you can convert this into percentages, which is right here, correct to two decimal places, 4.04. Why is this important? Because now in order to calculate the present value at this point, you'll say equal to $25,000, but then divide that by 4.04%. So this is the true present value. Put differently, if Sally had this amount of money at the end of this time period, which on the original timeline is time period three, she would be able to give out $25,000 to deserving students forever. So now the question is rather simple. How much money does Sally need today on the original timeline at time period zero so that she can have 618,811 at the end of year three? This fortunately is a very simple calculation in present value. 
you can actually do it two separate ways. One is to say, okay, let me calculate the present value of this 618,811, knowing that my annual interest rate is 4.04%. The number of time periods, which is number of years, because this is annual, we are measuring the actual number of years, which is three. So that's three because this is three years out. There is no payment. In Excel, payment function refers to the constant payment that you're getting. You're not getting anything, no constant payment. So bypass this such that in the future, three years from now, we need this amount. I'm going to enter this as a negative number so that my present value comes out as a positive number. And so when I do this, basically we need $549,487.24. There is an equivalent way you can do this if you think about your timeline, not in annual terms or in yearly terms, but in six month terms. So in other words, you say present value for interest rate, you say, well, interest rate is being compounded semi-annually. So every six months, I earn a rate of 2%, so 0 0.02. But then the number of periods is not gonna be three, it's gonna be six because you're earning 2% every six months for three years, which is six, six month periods. So this would be six. The payment you still don't care about and the future value is 618,000. Again, I'm gonna enter this as a negative number. You'll see that you'll get the exact same answer that way as well. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.